I remind you that the uh, webinar is being recorded, and actually that slide is there to remind me to press the record button. So we begin our presentation this evening, EIA AirVenture Oshkosh 2011. Uh, and we'd like to uh, bring in uh, Adam Smith, who will be our uh, presenter for this evening. Uh, Adam is the Vice President of Membership uh, with the EIA and uh, also an avid pilot. You can see his, his uh, co-pilot there, uh, Jenny, and I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll hear more about Jenny uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, Adam is in charge of uh, all of the features and attractions uh, at AirVenture, and uh, Adam, I will uh, turn everything over to you. Thank you, Steve, and uh, good evening, everyone. Hope you can all see my screen now. Uh, you should be seeing a photograph of the night air show, uh, which is one of the, the highlights of last year, and I, I'm hoping will be uh, a highlight for, for 2011 too. Um, well, as Steve said, my, my day job uh, at Oshkosh here is to uh, run the membership department, and magazines and chapters and things like that. Um, but the, one of the other hats I wear in the organization is to organize what we call features and attractions at AirVenture. So my goal this evening is to uh, give you an overview of where we're at. It's, uh, it's still quite early in the process. Um, it's, it's sort of mid-April and for, usually for about the next two or three months uh, the phone's ringing and, and we're doing a lot of work on different aircraft and attractions that want to come uh, to AirVenture. But uh, the program, I think, is certainly solid enough that I can lead you through, um, lead you through it, and give you give you some insights from from the inside of the organization about what you might expect. Um, so before we before we get into that, I um, thought it might be a good idea just to get an idea, uh, a little feel for my audience here. And I think Steve has got a poll that he's going to talk talk you all through. All right. Uh, this is our, our, our poll for this evening. How many times have you attended AirVenture? Or if you've attended many times, how many times have you been at Oshkosh? Uh, more than 25, more than 10 times, just a, a few times, not yet, but this is the year you're coming, or is it uh, something that's maybe on a bucket list, a, a someday sort of thing? So if uh, you would just take a moment, just click on the answer that's uh, closest uh, to the number of times you've been here, and we'll... Uh, kind of get a read for uh, for how we're doing. Uh, about 85% have voted already, so if you would just uh, take a moment, we'll, uh, we'll close out the poll in just a couple of seconds. And we'll go ahead and close it at about 95% here. So let's see what, uh, what everyone voted. Looks like... Um, Almost a tie between uh, more than 10 times and just a few times at 31%. 8% uh, of you still have that on the bucket list. That's good. That means uh, we have, uh, we'll, we'll be planning good things for you this year and in years to come. And 15% uh, of our audience tonight, Adam, has uh, been with us more than 25 times uh, at AirVenture. Wow. Were we even born then, Steve? <laughs> Steve. Actually, uh, I passed the 25-year uh, mark uh, two years ago. Oh, well done. Well, this personally for me will be my, my 11th uh, since I moved over to America from, from Scotland to, to work for EAA. Um, well, I'm glad we've got some first-timers and, and some people who've never been to the event. Welcome to you as well as to the, to the, uh, the long-time attendees. I'll, I'll try and uh, make it interesting for all of you. For the people that have never been before, it is really, really hard to, to describe to you what Oshkosh is. Um, you see a photograph like this. And, and it starts to give you a sense of the enormity of it, the, the lines and miles and miles of aircraft, the exhibit areas, the camping, etc. But really, um, you just have to come to, to get a, a, an understanding of why this is a, a world famous event and the kind of thing that even in my home country people would just uh, wax lyrical about. Um, and, and it, I can't, I can't set myself the goal to try and describe everything about Oshkosh because there is literally so much going on, uh, hundreds of sort of sub-events that take place and, and just all kind of interesting corners in terms of the aircraft areas and the exhibitors and things like that. But what I'll try and do this evening is at least guide you through some of the, the highlights that we're expecting for this year and uh, you know, some, of the, some of the key areas of the convention. But uh, how can we talk about this year without just spending a couple of minutes talking about last year because uh, it really was a very unusual Oshkosh. We're all so familiar with seeing the, the, the grounds full of aircraft and here we are. This, is, this was taken on opening day of AirVenture um, last year and 
everybody saying, where are all the airplanes? Because usually that is just full of them. And of course, we'd had this sort of biblical amount of rain. Um, I think, you know, normally in the first few weeks of July, we would have two or three inches of rain in Oshkosh, and we'd had 21 inches. And it had just deluged our grounds, and uh, it really... It really was an experience that I think any of us that were went through it will never forget because uh, everyone wanted to come and we just had to, uh, to had to work through all the difficulties that the rain caused. It was it was completely unprecedented and caused us to do things like um, create camping grounds um, on on hard surfaces wherever we could find them around the city of Oshkosh. This happened to be the parking lot of our local Walmart. And I think we had at one point 13 satellite campgrounds set up to accommodate people. But thankfully, uh, as um, the rain did subside, um, on the, it didn't rain again after the Saturday before the event, and the grounds gradually dried out, and we were able to get the airplanes in and the people in and uh, to have, have a good show in the end. But uh, I do want to, uh, you know, sort of thank everybody that went through that experience from uh, the attendees because I know it I know it, it, it caused some discomfort for, for people who were experiencing the event but particularly the volunteers and I know we have some of them on uh, on the webinar this evening listening in uh, we have about four and a half thousand volunteers that work together to put the event on each year it's a, it's a miracle and a marvel and um, our volunteers last year just went way beyond their normal extraordinary efforts uh, in order to make it happen. So I, I did want to start this, this webinar by just uh, paying a note of thanks uh, for last year. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to get fined uh, this evening every time I mention Air Rochelle Square. For the, last, for the whole 10 years that I've been working here, the main, uh, the main central ramp uh, at Oshkosh has been called Air Rochelle Square. But uh, the sponsors, Aeroshell, this year decided they wanted to um, wanted to move away from that. So yesterday, you may already have seen we put out an announcement that uh, it has a new name, and uh, from from this moment forth, it shall be called Conoco Phillips Plaza. And so uh, we we certainly thank uh, Aeroshell for for all of their past support. And they're not leaving the event. The um, we already had a few people who collect the the posters that. Uh, the Amulia posters that Aeroshell put out, and I'm sure they'll be around this year. Uh, the Aeroshell team are going to participate in the air show, and I think uh, there's likely to be a new area of the grounds that will be sponsored by Aeroshell. But we also uh, welcome Conoco Phillips. Uh, they've been wonderful sponsors of our Young Eagles program um, for the last three or four years, and uh, now they're coming in to support our major event by sponsoring Conoco Phillips Plaza. But I'm really worried this is the first public presentation I've made uh, after 10 years of referring to Aeroshell Square, so uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can train ourselves to call it, uh, what it what it now is. Okay, here's what I thought I'd do this evening is uh, actually the program is set enough that I think I can take you through uh, the course of the week. So we'll start on opening day and we'll go day by day through AirVenture and then maybe tidy up some things at the end. So what have we got on the slide here? I'm going to start in the top left-hand corner and then sort of work my way around this slide. So uh, you've got Terrafugia there, uh, which is a, a flying car that has been under development for a number of years. And uh, we are expecting Terrafugia to come to Oshkosh and make its first public flights this year. And uh, so that, that's pretty exciting. Um, well, but actually, the, I think there is sort of a flying cars theme developing for AirVenture. Uh, we've got five different flying cars uh, or flying car projects that are coming to the event. Uh, you may have seen things like the iTech Maverick uh, or Plane Driven, which is the uh, roadable glass star. And um, so we're, I think we're going to assemble all the flying cars um, uh, in, in one place so people can come and see uh, see this. And uh, that should that should be a lot of fun. Uh, Yellow Wings is a program that's being run by uh, Vintage Wings of Canada. They are commemorating this year the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan, which was one a very remarkable um, project that went took place during World War II in Canada, uh, where over 140,000 um, pilots were trained uh, during World War II uh, to, to help the, the Allied war effort, and uh, it, it was a huge huge part of the war effort and, and of course, a huge part of uh, our success. So um, 
all of the airplanes that, that were in the Commonwealth Air Training Plan were, were, were painted yellow, um, and you've probably seen things like Tiger Moths and Flea Finches, Harvards, and uh, Fairchild Cornells, things like that. And, and so we're going to have a big gathering of, of all the yellow winged airplanes that we can uh, get. This will be an official tour stop on a, on a sort of a national tour that um, Vintage Wings of Canada is doing. And that will be located in the Warbirds area. And I think uh, particularly um, with some of the, the rare Canadian types, we'll see some aircraft at Oshkosh that uh, aren't, normally, aren't normally seen there. Up in the top right here, we've got uh, an airmail airplane. Now, you may be familiar with this. This is an aircraft that over the last four or five years we've built here at EAA. And we're just prepping it for its first flight, which will take place uh, probably next month uh, if we can get uh, the grounds dried out here. It's a replica uh, of, a, of uh, the first ever airmail airplane. Um, and this year we are celebrating 100 years of airmail. Uh, the first airmail flights in history took place uh, in 1911. And what we've done is we've built a replica of a Blériot, and it's got an, uh, a very remarkable and rare engine on it, which dates from 1910, actually. Um, so we have a 101-year-old engine powering our aircraft, and uh, uh, that will be the centerpiece of a display that will be in the vintage area during AirVenture, um, which, which will be a commemorating 100 years of airmail. So we're going to bring in... Um, probably about a dozen really, really nice aircraft that show the history of, of airmail through the ages. Uh, we're, we're, there'll be a Hissel-powered Jenny that's coming, and lots of uh, those classic airmail airplanes from the 1920s and 1930s. And uh, the vintage volunteers are going to be doing a reenactment of an airmail station of the 1920s. They were in this week, this past weekend, building a historic airmail shack. And it will be a fun place where families can go and write a piece of airmail, and we'll fly it in a historic airmail airplane before it's uh, mailed on to its destination. Uh, the ultralights area during AirVenture, I'm uh, moving down now to the, the Quicksilver here. Uh, the ultralights uh, volunteers have decided they're, they're going to do a, commemorate, uh, a, a celebration of, uh, of the Quicksilver line of, of, of ultralights this year. So they're inviting all owners and flyers and builders of Quicksilvers to come in, and that's probably been, uh, if not the most uh, successful and numerous ultralight in history, certainly up there in, in the top few. And so uh, my understanding is that they're, they're, they've had a very good response to that call, and uh, we should expect to see some good activity in the ultralight area. Uh, over on the home building side, it, uh, we're doing a a celebration of, of Zenith, uh, called Zeniths to Oshkosh. I think we already um, have, I think they have already filled the 50 uh, spaces that uh, have been assigned in the camping area. There, there will basically 50 aircraft will come in um, together and we'll have a, a special gathering of aircraft and a special showcase flyby on Monday um, to commemorate, again, another um, aircraft type and an air, uh, a fa the Heinz family um, and the contribution they've made to, to our segment of aviation. Uh, back over in the vintage area, uh, we have the Lockheed 12. Um, it is the 75th anniversary of the Lockheed 12 this year, and um, uh, we, a group of owners is, is working together. T I think there are only about 11 of them flying, uh, and we have, I think, six or seven confirmed that will be coming to Oshkosh, and uh, that there's still two or three more that we're hoping to bring in. Uh, but it will certainly be uh, wonderful to see so many of that uh, historic type in one place. And then we sort of have a sort of a mini Oshkosh of blimps this year in the sense that uh, for the past few years, uh, on and off, we've had the Goodyear blimp as, as attended the event, and uh, it's been a sort of a, become a, quite a familiar sight uh, over, overhead and uh, parked overnight at Pioneer Airport. But this year, we're we're also um, looking forward to the, the Zeppelin NT coming to Oshkosh. And there, there is only one of these flying in North America. Um, it's, it's been over here for two or three years now, operating out of the, the San Francisco area. Um, but uh, it's just recently embarked on a tour that's going to take it to various major cities around the country. And uh, it will be stopping at Oshkosh. And um, this is actually one where rides will be available. So. Um, we haven't announced the details. I, well, I guess it, this, this won't be an EAA program. It will, the sales will actually be done through um, Airship Ventures, who operates the aircraft. Um, so I, I don't have pricing and, and things like and specific details. But uh, if you watch our website or their website, you should be able to, uh, as soon as we've got the details ironed out, 
um, get information about how you can uh, you can take a ride on the blimp if that's something that uh, uh, you've always wanted to do. Which for me personally is uh, is one of my aviation ambitions is to fly in a blimp. So I'm I'm thrilled about that, and I will be getting my check book out. I think. Okay, that's Monday. Um, oh, we mustn't forget we have uh, our opening day concert, uh, which this year will be Ario Speedwagon. And uh, I think this, I think this, photo, yeah, this photograph from last year. We had Chicago and, uh, and a good crowd and some good sunshine. It's it's a very unique place to to have a big concert um, on Conoco Phillips Plaza with all the airplanes surrounding you. And uh, we've had a really good really good reaction to Ariel Speedwagon and that announcement. So um, looking forward to it. And particularly that they have a song called "Time for Me to Fly," which uh, we thought was very appropriate for for the whole Oshkosh experience. Uh, moving on to Tuesday, um, we've uh, uh, announced that this will be a tribute day to, to Bob Hoover. Now, if, I think if ever there was a someone that, that truly could be called uh, the pilot's pilot, it's Bob Hoover. Um, his, his skills as a pilot are legendary, not just in, in America, but truly worldwide. And he's someone who's been um, not just renowned, but a, a really strong supporter of aviation and the whole aviation family and culture uh, for many, many years. And we thought it would be appropriate this year to to honour Bob. Um, and so, so we've basically declared Tuesday of our venture this year, Bob Hoover Day. And um, there'll be a couple of opportunities where you'll be able to go and, and hear Bob speak. He'll be at Warbirds in review, I think, at 1 o'clock that day. And I think we have him scheduled for Theatre in the Woods in the evening. And then during the afternoon, uh, we'll, be, we'll be sort of um, dedicating a portion of the air show to, as a tribute to Bob. And so um, let me talk you through the aircraft here. We've... we've um, We've got the, let's start on the top right-hand side, uh, we'll have an F-86, which is one of the aircraft that Bob did test flying in. Um, we are pretty confident that uh, we'll see a Fokker Wolf 190, which uh, Bob very famously uh, escaped from Germany. He, he sort of he got out of his prison camp and stole a Fokker Wolf 190 right at the end of World War II. And so uh, that's a fun aircraft to, uh, to have as part of the Hoover celebration. Um, one of Bob's signature airplanes is the P-51 Mustang All Yeller, and that's not been seen at Oshkosh for many, many years. And uh, the owner, John Bagley, has uh, committed to get it to us this uh, to be part of the celebration, which is really wonderful. But perhaps the thing that may catch the most attention is, um, well, the Shrike Commander that's in the centre of the slide here um, is again a, a signature aircraft of Bob Hoover's life and career. And of course, this aircraft is in the National Air and Space Museum now, uh, which just gives you some uh, understanding of how important an aircraft um, it is. And, and I think for, for, <coughs> for two or three decades, Bob just wowed air show audiences around the world with the routine that he did in the Shrike Commander, very famously um, feathering first one, then two engines, and, uh, and doing this incredible routine. Well. Uh, um, the original aircraft is in the National Air and Space Museum, but uh, Bob Odegaard, who may be familiar to EAA, as uh, he's been a participant in, in our air shows for a number of years. Bob's actually acquired a Shrike Commander and is working up a routine that will be part of the tribute to, uh, to Bob Hoover. Uh, I think it will be done with the P-51 Mustang. And uh, I think Bob's basically, he's doing it, he's sort of practicing things, and uh, it'll be interesting to see just how far he gets. I, I think it... Uh, he, he may not even attempt to do exactly what Bob Hoover used to do in this aeroplane because Bob Hoover was special for a reason. Um, but it will be really nice to see, um, uh, to see whatever Bob Odegaard comes up with and we really thank him for, um, for making the effort on behalf of a true legend in aviation. Now I snuck, um, I did sneak a photograph of the um, Northrop Flying Wing on my slide here. Uh, I should be very clear that that, that is uh, not uh, confirmed as coming to Oshkosh at this time. Um, but I, I put it there because we would like it to. Bob Hoover did the test flights on this aircraft uh, back in the 40s, I think. And um, it's, it's a very unique aircraft. It's at the Plains of Fame Museum at Chino. Uh, but I would, in our discussions with them, um, they, they would love love it to come to Oshkosh, but it is just too far to fly uh, such a rare aircraft uh, cross country. So we're trying to think creatively about how to get this aircraft to Oshkosh. And uh, 
<coughs> it's been measured and it does fit in a in a C17. So we are making some effort to um, to see if we can persuade a, a C17 operator to to help us out in the tribute to Bob and to actually air freight the aircraft to Oshkosh. So um, I put that in there because it's, it, I think it's an indication of what we're trying to do. There are other aircraft uh, that associated with Bob, uh, the F-100 comes to mind as well, that we're still trying to bring in as part of this tribute. And uh, uh, it's, really, it's really nice to see everyone, how, the feeling that everyone has for Bob. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of expressions of that from all attendees uh, during the event. Uh, also on Tuesday, we will be, uh, that's the first day of competition in uh, an electric aircraft contest that we'll be running during our venture this year called eVenture. Um, we have uh, a sponsored prize uh, of $60,000 um, to, to help recognize progress in uh, electric powered aircraft. And uh, I must admit, when we, when we sort of put the word out uh, about this in, in December, I thought, well, I'll be, I'll be quite happy if we get four or five electric aircraft coming to Oshkosh and participating in this. Uh, but already we have 10 confirmed uh, participants and some really interesting aircraft and interesting designs uh, coming out. I've, I've put up here five, uh, so in the top left of this slide, five of the aircraft that are uh, participating. Uh, this is unique. Um, you see the Sonics here, this is Randall Fishman's Electrifier X, uh, the Antares Glider, and the Pipistrel Taurus. Um, I think they're all pretty well known about. Some of the other aircraft that have entered are, uh, I'm under some level of confidentiality but, um, because they haven't really been revealed to the public yet, but um, uh, just believe me, there they're, they're are going to be some very, very interesting aircraft um, uh, participating in this electric aircraft contest. And I hope as we go through the week, um, we'll achieve our main goal, which is to put electric aircraft in, in the spotlight a little bit and demonstrate to the world and the aviation community just how much progress has been made in this area of flight. If you think about it, this is the first fundamental change in, in aircraft propulsion since the jet engine was invented. We, have a, we now have an entirely new way of, uh, of propelling an aircraft. And um, you know there are some very compelling reasons uh, for us to want it to succeed. So, um, with the support of um, aircraft spruce, uh, aero LEDs, uh, uh, wicks, and um, Dynon, um, we, who, who all came together to sponsor the prize, um, EAA is very pleased to be doing this. And. So from tu on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll be running a series of contests. Uh, there, there are. Uh, will include time to climb, uh, a speed contest, an endurance contest, and there'll also be a sort of an evaluation of the technology uh, in, in each aircraft. And we'll be adding, uh, there'll be prizes awarded in each category and there will be a grand champion uh, awarded as well. Down in the bottom right, I just assembled a few, th these are not uh, aircraft that will be in the um, electric flight contest but they're sort of interesting in, in their own way. Um, this is the Bi-Energy Cessna 172. Um, that we, you can see it's got the solar panels on, on top of the wing, and it, um, that one's got, I think, a hybrid propulsion system. It was a very, very interesting project um, to take. Uh, the Cessna 172 is the most produced aeroplane in the whole of history. Uh, the, the, nothing was produced in greater numbers than the 172, and um, it's sort of a retrofit of it um, with, with an, a sort of hybrid electric propulsion system, which is uh, very interesting. We look forward to seeing that at Oshkosh. Um, we have the Sikorsky Firefly, which was here last year. This is an electric-powered helicopter. Um, and that, um, I don't think has flown yet, but I think the plan is that it, over in the next month or two, it will fly. And we're hoping to see it at Oshkosh. And, and, and our fingers crossed that we could see the electric helicopter actually fly here at Oshkosh as well. And uh, and the bottom right, as while I'm talking about Sikorsky, that's the Sikorsky X2, which uh, just won the uh, the Collier Trophy uh, for its innovation in in uh, I guess speed uh, for for helicopters. Uh, we are expecting to see the X2 at Oshkosh this year as well, which would be uh, really really great to see. Okay, moving on to Wednesday, uh, we've declared that Navy Day. Um, as you can see from the big logo, it is the centennial of naval aviation this year. And uh, this is one of the, the, the main themes of, of Air Venture, which will not just be on Wednesday, it will sort of permeate the whole week, I think, in terms of programming. 
Um, but we, we, we will do, make a special effort on Wednesday, particularly in terms of the air show and some of the activities that take place. So uh, I think on this one, again, I'll start, let me start in the bottom left this time, because that, uh, that takes us way back to 1911 and the first, <clears throat> the first flight um, from a ship by uh, Eugene Ely, and an EAA member called Bob Coolbar has constructed a very accurate replica of the Curtis Ely pusher, and he would bring in that to Oshkosh. And I do want to thank Bob. Um, this is a huge labor of love for him. I think when he started the journey, he thought maybe he would get uh, some sponsors that would come in and help him, but it's turned into uh, something that he's, he's basically had to fund himself. and. Uh, He's shown great dedication and commitment to build the aircraft and to, to, to share it around the aviation community. So uh, stop by and see Bob on Conical Phillips Plaza and uh, shake his hand and, and, and thank him for what he's done. Um, and, and if he's got a collection bucket out, maybe drop, maybe drop a few coins in it. Um, obviously the Warbirds area will be coming in really strong behind the uh, the Navy uh, Centennial theme, and we're expecting to see a good number of Navy aircraft. We are hoping to put up a, a cat flight of the uh, uh, all the different uh, Grumman cats uh, that we can that we can muster, along with a, a number of other uh, uh, Navy warbirds, particularly of the World War II era. Uh, we've got the U.S. Marine Corps Harrier. We'll be displaying um, several days during the week. Uh, that's the official uh, demo team. Uh, it, it is also as well as the the U.S. Navy Centennial uh, Celebration, uh, the Coast Guard and the U.S. Marine Corps are also celebrating 100 years uh, of flying in, in their branches too. Down the center we have uh, three, three photographs, uh, all of which show uh, examples of what the Navy has done to, I think, over 20 aircraft now. They've taken aircraft in their modern inventory and put heritage paint schemes on them uh, that reflect different periods in the history of, uh, of uh, the Navy. And my understanding is we may see all of these aircraft at Oshkosh. Um, uh, there could be as many as 20 plus aircraft on uh, Conical Phillips Plaza. Um, so we can show all of the, all the heritage paint schemes. And then we have an, we have an astronaut in the, uh, in the bottom right. I think this one is Gene Cernan, and, um, who was very famously the, the commander of Apollo 17 and the last man, uh, the last man on the moon. Um, as we started to develop our programming, one of the interesting things we noticed was how many astronauts in history have been uh, actually started their careers in the Navy. So one of the things we'll be doing on Wednesday evening at Theatre in the Woods is bringing uh, several of them together um, uh, to talk about uh, how the, uh, their life in the Navy and how that led them into, into space. Uh, so Gene Cernan will be there, um, Jim Lovell, the uh, commander of Apollo 13 has also confirmed he'll be there. We are very, very hopeful that Neil Armstrong, um, the first man on the moon, uh, will also come. And uh, he, he's, he's <coughs> penciled us in, but uh, can't make a firm commitment at this time. But so everybody, keep your fingers crossed that uh, that that will turn into a firm commitment because that would be a really stellar gathering of uh, Navy astronauts. Okay. <laughs> Keep moving through the week. It's a tribute to Bert Rutan uh, on Thursday. Um, Bert retired last week, and um, well, what, what a career he's had in aviation. I think in terms of the um, the EAA movement over the last 40 years, uh, I, I, I can't think of anyone uh, who's been more prolific than Bert Rutan in terms of, uh, of the number of designs that he's created and flown. Uh, but the impact of those designs on aviation. Uh, progress and aviation history is is just immense. So to mark Bert's retirement, um, uh, we did want to uh, pay tribute to him this year. And so there will be a. I, I am certain that the most broad and varied collection of Bert Rutan airplanes that's ever been seen in one place together uh, will be here at Oshkosh this year. We've had a great response. Um, over a hundred aircraft owners already have registered to park in a special area where there will be obviously be dozens of uh, the canards and and also some of the more niche um, rattan designs like the defiant and the solitaire and the quickie etc and <coughs> Bert himself is really excited about this he 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 really wants to retire and he hasn't made any commitment in his life at all apart from to come to Oshkosh this year 
Uh, Bert is going to bring his boomerang, uh, which is the aircraft here at the uh, at the top center of the slide. Uh, that hasn't flown in nine years, and and it was interesting. We we've got an art, an interview with Bert uh, coming up in the next issue of Sport Aviation magazine, and he considers the the boomerang to be probably his most um, impactful design, and the one he's perhaps the most proud of of all his designs. So he really wanted to make the effort to get uh, to get that here to Oshkosh. So. Um, that will be fantastic. Uh, we've also got the catbird, uh, which Bert uh, would like to bring also. That's been hanging upside down in his hangar uh, for uh, many years and again hasn't been seen in Oshkosh for a long time. Uh, you may be wondering what the formation team is here at the top right. I think this is just a wonderful expression of uh, what Oshkosh is all about. Uh, this is a, a team called uh, Pat Patui Riva. Uh, or Team Riva, uh, which which is a, an aerobatic team that's uh, quite well known in Europe. They've performed over 200 air shows uh, based out of France uh, across the whole of Europe, but they've never uh, been seen uh, in North America before, and um, they have volunteered to fly across the Atlantic in their aircraft uh, just to be part of the tribute to Bert Rutan. So um, the only the only thing we need to check on that one is uh, regulatory, uh, just to make sure that we that they're allowed to perform at Oshkosh. Um, but uh, we don't anticipate any problems there, and uh, that would be a wonderful thing and uh, a wonderful commitment on their part to uh, to come all this way um, uh, across thousands of miles to to pay tribute to someone and their achievements. Uh, in the bottom left, it is uh, that's Voyager, and uh, as well as being Bert Rutan's retirement year, it is also the 25th anniversary year. Uh, since Voyager flew around the world non-stop and non-refueled. So as a dimension of our Bert Rutan tribute, we will also be um, trying uh, to re remembering the great impact that Voyager made uh, with, with, of course, Dick Rutan. And um, I think we're going to have a special evening in the museum where we have a, a wonderful display uh, of, of Voyager artifacts, and we are refreshing that display with some new things that um, have come to us recently. So all in all, uh, we're, we're very much looking forward to um, to welcoming Bert and, uh, and the whole spirit and culture that, he, that he's brought to aviation. Friday, um, <coughs> salute to Veterans Day. Uh, I just love this photograph that I found of uh, the B-29 Fifi uh, coming right at you there. Uh, Fifi hasn't been to Oshkosh um, in over, over a decade. And um, as many of you know, uh, we've tried to get the aircraft here several times in the last few years, but uh, there were she's been through a number of uh, troubles with engines and things like that. But uh, it seems like that's all straightened down now. They've got the new engines installed that are running pretty smoothly. So uh, that will be a, a really great attraction um, on Conoco Phillips Plaza. And um, I think I think the CAF are also going to bring their B24 this year, and uh, of course we we normally have two or three B17s involved. And I think one thing we would like to do on Friday is get the the uh, 17, the 24, and the 29 up in the sky together. Um, that would be that would be a really uh, unique photo opportunity, I think. I also uh, chucked in here a few of the Warbird aircraft that I know are coming. Uh, the Seafire is, uh, was a big hit last year. That's coming back. Uh, Vintage Wings of Canada are bringing a fairy swordfish. Um, not sure one of those has been seen at Oshkosh before. Um, we have a beautiful Grumman and Duck uh, owned by Chuck Greenhill coming. Uh, CAF are bringing their Zero. Uh, Vintage Wings of Canada couldn't get their Lysander down because of the weather last year and, and, and do want to bring that back. And then in the evening on Friday, Gary Sinise will be doing another concert at uh, Theatre in the Woods. Uh, this will be the third that he's done. Uh, Gary, of course, is well known as an actor, but is also an extremely accomplished musician. has a band called Lieutenant Dan Band, uh, which is, a, of course, a reference to one of his famous characters that he played in uh, the movie Forrest Gump. Um, if, you haven't, if you haven't seen the Lieutenant Dan Band, they're just a, a flat-out great band. They play a, a lot of... Uh, variety in their music and it's it's well worth uh, going down there on Friday evening to see and uh, we will we are planning another honor flight this year that was something we did for the first time last year as part of our salute to veterans activities um, we loaded up um, a Boeing 757 with um, a couple of hundred World War II veterans uh, and escorts and took them to the National World War II Memorial in Washington DC and then they came back at the end of the day and that was a very moving experience for everyone that participated in it 
and uh, another one of those is planned. Uh, I think it will uh, take place on Friday this year. And then we make it to the weekend. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the big hits of the event last year was uh, something we'd never done before, a night air show. And in some ways, we, we'd all had a bit of a rough week just with the, the, the wet weather and getting through that. And uh, that night air show is something I personally will never forget. I'd seen night air shows at a couple of other locations uh, and, and always sort of liked the experience. But somehow, with the Oshkosh crowd and in that location, it just was really, really special. And it's, it's sort of hard to describe, but um, anybody that was there, you know what I'm talking about. And if you weren't there, just try and find, if, if, if you can, try and get down to see the night air show. I've never heard an air show crowd cheering and uh, the way they were and just there was just something about it. And one of the stars is, is the centerpiece of this slide, which is Bob Carlton and uh, his jet, jet propelled uh, uh, glider, which was really, really special. Um, but actually, I, I, I skipped to the end of the day, the night air show. I should have I started with the hot air balloons, which will, will kick off Saturday. Um, we didn't actually launch the hot air balloons last year because we had a very thick fog, um, so we just inflated them on the ground. But weather permitting, we'll actually let them fly, and uh, that takes place out of the ultralight area at about 6 a.m. Um, and through the day, we'll go through the normal activities, finish with the night air show. Um, but there'll also be an Aaron Tipping concert. So between the end of the um, between the end of the regular air show and the beginning of the night air show, Aaron Tippin, who is a, a pilot and, of course, a successful country musician, will be performing at Theatre in the Woods. And there'll also be, we're, we're trying to create a sort of a, a, a festival atmosphere on Conoco Phillips Plaza and out of the, um, uh, the Ford hangar, uh, they're going to have a, a Blues Brothers tribute act uh, playing in there, which I, th I think will be a lot of fun also. Um, okay, I'm off the day by day now. Uh, people and celebrities. I, I put this slide together. I, I should again be clear that not all the people on this slide are confirmed as coming to Oshkosh. I, I would say this that if you go from left to right, the likelihood of them coming decreases. Um, but let me sort of talk you through it. Um, we are planning a, a, um, a thank you uh, to to all of our past chairman of the Young Eagles program. Uh, so you can see Harrison Ford and Chuck Yeager and. Cliff Robertson and uh, Sully and, and Jeff Skiles. Um, and so uh, we're, we're hoping to see all of those folks here at Oshkosh to participate in, uh, in our thank you to them for uh, their contribution uh, as chairman of the Young Eagles program, which recently passed 1.6 million uh, kids uh, that have been flown since the program began. Um, this program, Flying Wild Alaska, I, have, I must confess I have not seen, but um, it seems to me that a lot of people outside of aviation have been captivated by this. And I'm hearing a lot from people that have um, uh, really sort of, it, it, I think it's brought a new audience to aviation, people who are interested in the personalities and the lifestyle uh, that, that's in the, this reality show. So uh, interestingly, they got in touch with us and asked if they could uh, participate in Oshkosh. So we're hoping uh, that we can, we can form a uh, connection there and maybe get some of the some of the family down to, to, to Oshkosh. Uh, Kurt Russell was with us last year and I think he's coming back. Um, and then we start getting over onto the right hand side of the slide and, and these are uh, people that were, were trying to get to Oshkosh I guess. Uh, Craig Ferguson um, uh, of course is famous for his late night chat show but uh, he, he learned to fly recently and has, has talked several times on his show about, about Oshkosh and uh, whenever we've talked to him, he's declared that he would really like to get out. So we're, we're hoping that this will be the year he'll make it. Uh, Peter Jackson at the bottom uh, right there, clusking, uh, clutching his Oscar. Um, uh, very famously, uh, Peter uh, directed the uh, the three uh, mega blockbuster movies, uh, the Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, but I, I, you may know, you may not, that he is uh, an avid fan of aviation, particularly early aviation uh, and the aviation of World War One, and uh, he's got a whole, almost a little industry down there in New Zealand building World War One replicas, and um, um, he he is ho he currently is making the Hobbit, um, which is a, a sort of a, I guess a prequel I think to the or a sequel to the Lord of the Rings. Um, 
and but he's booked a, he's booked a vacation to come to Oshkosh, so uh, we better hope that the filming for The Hobbit goes well, um, because uh, we'd, we'd really love to welcome him here. And uh, hopefully he can tell us a little bit more about another movie project he's working on. He's got the rights to the, the classic movie, The Dam Busters, and he's been working for several years on a remake of, of The Dam Busters. Uh, so maybe, maybe we could get a sneak preview of that. Uh, now we're getting into megastardom. Uh, let's go to the top. That's George Lucas, uh, famous director of uh, the whole Star Wars movies and all the Indiana Jones films and things like that. Uh, in fact, Lucasfilm, I, my understanding is Lucasfilm has only ever made movies that were either the Star Wars, uh, the six Star Wars movies and the Indiana Jones series. That's, they're the only movies that have ever gone out under the Lucasfilm brand. But that will change uh, next year because they've made a movie uh, called Red Tails, um, uh, which, which is about the Tuskegee Airmen. And um, we are hoping that um, uh, the, the sort of imminent release of that will, um, th there's been some contact, and we're hopeful that um, George Lucas will come to Oshkosh and maybe show us some previews of uh, previews of the of the movie, and then finally Tom Cruise. Uh, this being the centennial of naval aviation and Top Gun being the ultimate naval aviation film, and Tom Cruise being a noted uh, pilot and EAA member. Um, look, which every, every year we get asked, you know, is Tom Cruise coming to Oshkosh? And he's never been and uh, every year we try and get him here. I, I think we've probably got the best chance ever right now because um, we have uh, some close acquaintances who are currently making uh, Mission Impossible 4 with him, and he has also signed up to be involved in the making of Top Gun 2, uh, which is now in, um, in pre-production. So um, we got a chance, but I ain't promising it, and uh, so don't, don't shout at me if it doesn't happen. Evening programs. Um, well, Steve, you're responsible for one of them, Theatre in the Woods. Do you want to do you want to tell us what's uh, what you got lined up for theatre? Well, we can just, uh, talk just to about, put you on the spot. There, <laughs> we can talk uh, about a few of the things uh, that that you hadn't mentioned uh, already. I think uh, you you got the, probably the most of the major uh, major ones uh, that'll be coming to theatre in the woods. Uh, probably one of the um, Excuse me. One of the uh, the things that the folks might not know is that we actually have a a pre-show on Sunday night, and uh, Aviation Speakers Bureau has always uh, come through for us. Uh, actually, last year was their 25th year of doing this. Uh, they come through with some great motivational speakers uh, with with uh, wonderful aviation stories, uh, and that is uh, Sunday night. So even before the the uh, convention begins, uh, we've got something going on at Theater in the Woods. Um, Monday night is sort of our traditional welcome. Uh, the air show performers uh, uh, recognize uh, someone within their industry with the Bill Barber Award. Uh, we'll do that right after the uh, the ARIO concert is over. Uh, as long as I have enough time to run from the the uh, from uh, Conoco Phillips Plaza back to Theater in the Woods, we'll get things uh, get things moving. Uh, also, we, one of the uh, themes Adam mentioned earlier, the hundredth anniversary of air mails, and we'll have a, a presentation on that on uh, on Monday night. Of course, uh, Tuesday night, uh, the culmination of Bob Hoover Day. Uh, David Hartman will be doing a tribute to Bob Hoover. Right now, that's scheduled for uh, eight o'clock on uh, on Tuesday evening. Uh, Wednesday, of course, the the big is the the big program there. Eight o'clock, the hundredth anniversary of naval aviation. Um, and uh, we're sort of in the in the throes of, of putting that all together. Adam mentioned the uh, astronauts who would be there, but there will be uh, other uh, naval aviation uh, folks that will be uh, also a part of that uh, two-hour celebration of, of the Navy. Um, Friday night, as you said, the uh, uh, Lieutenant Dan Band will be here. Um, Thursday night, need to back up uh, Bert Rutan with the uh, with his uh, tribute and also uh, another program from uh, women in aviation that will uh, start out the program on Thursday night so that's at seven and then Bert's tribute uh, begins at uh, at eight o'clock uh, and then uh, rolling into the uh, Gary Snee show on Friday night and uh, Aaron Tippin and the night air show on Saturday so that kind of uh, encapsulates uh, some of the big highlights from uh, theater in the woods thanks Steve um, and then, oh, as well as Theatre in the Woods, every night we have the Flying Movie Theatre, which um, has become a very popular, um, staple part of the event over the last five years. And uh, we are, again, we're just putting together the program. Uh, don't really have a list of, um, uh, of of movies and people, but you can probably pick up uh, from some of the personalities we were talking about earlier. 
um, maybe a maybe a theme or a sense of the, the kind of programming that we would like to put on. Um, we did. Uh, I will mention that we we did have a little vote uh, for years. We've been talking about whether we should whether we it would be appropriate to show the movie Airplane at uh, the Flying Movie Theater because we've had lots and lots of requests for it. But there's just something about that movie that made us think we should ask. So we did a little internet vote of our membership, and uh, it was pretty overwhelmingly positive. So. I think on Saturday night we're planning to show Airplane because uh, it's a little bit late, so um, um, all the children will have gone to bed, I think. Okay, I'm just going to tidy up a few things that we haven't mentioned, and then we can, uh, I assume, Steve, you've had some questions and things like that, and uh, we, can, we can get into uh, whatever's on your mind. Um, as I said earlier, this is the time of year when like things are just lots of things are happening and new things are coming up almost every day. Um, yesterday I got a nice email that, uh, that there's been a new restoration C46 uh, commando um, which is uh, going to come to Oshkosh. It's called Tinkerbell I think. Uh, doesn't look as pretty as Tinkerbell. Although I suppose it depends on your point of view doesn't it? It's, uh, anyway we're very much looking forward to seeing that here. I don't recall seeing a C46 at Oshkosh before. Um, if you opened your e-hotline from EAA this evening, you'll see this uh, amazing thing called the Fly Nano, which was just unveiled at uh, Aero Friedrichshafen this week. And I really want to see this aeroplane at Oshkosh. Uh, it's a, uh, as you can see, it's it's got a pretty funky box wing design, and uh, it's it's um, it's a seaplane. So uh, it gives me a reason to talk about the seaplane base. Um, if you've never been to the seaplane base, uh, you really have to go. It's a little bit off the beaten path of Oshkosh because it's uh, three or four miles away on the lake shore. Not everybody gets down there, and um, I really recommend if you if you haven't been and you have the chance, just jump on the little bus and go down to the seaplane base. It's a little if 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 um, if it were anywhere else, it would be absolutely world famous on its on its own because it, it's such an idyllic environment and there's so much uh, going on there. So uh, uh, the, bu the bus runs all day to and from the, the seaplane base. Uh, bottom right is uh, sort of a recent shot of the Bugatti replica, uh, which um, is a replica of the airplane that's in the museum here at EAA. Um, the, it, it, it's the only airplane that Bugatti ever built and we've had a group down in Oklahoma uh, um, that, that's been built that's been building a replica of it and I, they're very serious I'm sure they will succeed and um, I think they're going to bring the replica to Oshkosh this summer and I don't I don't think it will have flown by then, but it may have. It may be close. Uh, but we, we're planning to display it in our EAA member welcome centre. Uh, Any time we've run a story or done anything on this aircraft, there's been huge interest in it. So I know people will be really interested to go along and see the workmanship and talk to the people behind it. Uh, we've got a C-17 coming. And I stuck that in the slide. And of course, there's just lots of things like Bonanza to Oshkosh and Cherokees to Oshkosh, the mass arrivals. So much uh, energy and planning going on with all the different type clubs and the different groups uh, that are involved in the event. Uh, a few things still working on, um, that are, none of which are confirmed, but uh, you know we, we, we're a certain way down the, right down the track on them. We're talking quite, um, quite a lot to Boeing about bringing the 787 here, uh, so fingers crossed that that would happen. It's an aircraft that obviously is very well known now and um, uh, hasn't been to Oshkosh. There's a lot of new technology in it, so we've uh, we've got a slot open for the for the Dreamliner, and I think there's a reasonable chance that that, that, that would come through for us. Uh, but obviously, Boeing are in a uh, you know in a flight test environment, and uh, that may change. Uh, top right is a Brazilian, uh, in fact, the national Brazilian formation team called Smoke Squadron and uh, they are performing in Dayton I think the week before Oshkosh and would like to come uh, to be at Oshkosh so we're hoping to work that one through and, and get them up here. Uh, we've got an F5 uh, T, an F5 team, I think it's four uh, Navy F5s that would like to come and display uh, which would be great. Uh, hoping to bring the Ericsson Skycrane back. Uh, hoping to get an F-22 to Oshkosh, we get we get asked about that every year. It it uh, it is a really difficult aircraft to get hold of right now, uh, for various reasons. And 
but we're doing everything we can on that one. Uh, pretty hopeful that we'll see a B1 here this year. We've been contacted by a unit that would like to come. Uh, so really that's, um, um, we, we're, we're just a bit constrained on space actually this year. I've never known a year like it in terms of the, the main display ramp. There's so many aircraft want to come. And it's the first time I remember at this point in the process being so, uh, being worried about, about space. And then the far left, uh, the aerobatic four trimotor. Um, you may have read in our publications that Greg Herrick, um, who, who, who owns at least one other trimotor, has had a, a trimotor restored and specially strengthened uh, so that it can replicate the aerobatic routine of Harold Johnson uh, that he used to do in the 1950s. And if you've ever been on YouTube and watched the video of the aerobatic routine in the Ford trimotor, that's, that's something else. And uh, I think that would be a really, really popular uh, thing if we were able to and make it happen, Oshkosh. Uh, I know Greg wants to do it, um, but it's the kind of project that you have to take step by step and, and uh, think about safety and just, just doing things the right way. So um, we'll see what transpires there, and, but, but uh, certainly fingers crossed on that one. Uh, and um, Hal Bryan, our online community manager, um, uh, asked if I would uh, put a little plug in here for uh, for his Facebook and Twitter uh, pages, and, and I really recommend if you're not already signed up to these things that, that you do sign up for them. If, if you're interested in AirVenture, um, it's just it, this is this is the place where you get all the latest news first. Basically, as soon as we have an announcement and it's actually confirmed, uh, we'll stick it, we'll, we'll we'll Twitter it, and we'll put it on Facebook. And uh, and Facebook as well is a, is a great place, uh, you know, to to interact. And we're able to post a lot of photographs there. Uh, and reports during the week of the event, so um, sign up for those if you if you haven't already. And that was my last slide, and I leave you with a photograph of my airplane, my beautiful clipped wing cub, uh, which is my pride and joy. And uh, can't wait. Yeah, it, this is very much a sort of a, a summer airplane. It's not really suitable for flying in the winter. I haven't flown it yet this year, so I'm just itching for it to. Uh, the snow has just about melted here in Oshkosh. I'm itching to go flying in it. And uh, look forward to seeing you all here in Oshkosh. And don't tell me there's been no questions, Steve. Well, um, there was one that was uh, posted almost right out of the box, and that was uh, the Dreamliner, but you answered that one already. Uh, but uh, Zach just uh, dropped one in. Uh, any word on the uh, Collings Foundation and anything that they might be uh, thinking of bringing for the, for the show? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know of anything specific. Of course, the Collins Foundation last year brought their F4 Phantom, which was, um, that was really hard to get here because, of course, it's a very fuel-hungry aircraft and uh, very costly to operate, but it was just tremendous that they were able to bring it and support the Salute to Veterans activities and the... Um, uh, the turnout of jet airplanes last year was actually pretty phenomenal, uh, but beyond that, I, I don't I don't know anything specific that we're working on. But but you know there may be things that I'm not aware of. By the way, you know I, I do this job and I I do presentations like this. But every year, half of what shows up, I you know I never even knew it was coming. I I I, I go on YouTube and I see videos of the event and it's like I didn't even see that. You know and that was really cool. And I, what I was Earlier, when I was saying Oshkosh is so hard to describe, it's uh, you know it, 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 there's just so much going on here. I, I, all I've been able to do here tonight is sort of skim the surface a little bit, um, so that you know there could well be like ten Collins Foundation airplanes here. I just I just don't know. All right. Uh, it's kind of fun. You mentioned uh, Facebook and Twitter. I, I happen to have the, my Twitter feed going here, and I can see some of the uh, the folks who follow Oshkosh 11, if you know what a hashtag is. Uh, the Oshkosh 11 hashtag are, are already uh, retweeting some of the things that uh, that you've reported on this evening, including the uh, fact that it is now ConocoPhillips Plaza. So I think you get a you get a pass for one of those uh, missteps uh, that will be coming in the future. Um, is there uh, any... Um, Improvements, changes on the site this year. I mean, we went through some some big changes a couple of years ago. Um, anything that that will surprise folks when they show up? Um, good one, Steve. Um, I actually called Steve Taylor, our facilities manager, this afternoon, and just said, "I'm, I'm giving the webinar this evening. You got any up, updates for me?" Um, so I, I think it, we've seen quite a lot of site changes over the past uh, two or three years. 
and um, there probably will be less in the way of very visible changes uh, this upcoming year. Um, there are no major um, building construction projects underway. Um, of course, after the experience we had last year, we are doing a lot of drainage work on the site uh, based upon what we learned about how the site copes with a deluge of water. So that's been a that's been a high priority to to try and. Um, make us better prepared in, in, you know, we hope it never happens again because it was like a 200 year event, but um, if it does, we'll, I think we'll be in a little bit better shape. Uh, Steve did report that um, quite a, a lot more of the roads are going to be chip sealed. Um, this was a, as a technique that we uh, tried out over the last couple of years and it's been really successful in keeping the dust down um, on some of the roads uh, throughout the site. So. Um, in the campground areas, um, there's going to be a lot more chip sealing going on, and I think uh, anyone that's camped and experienced the dust on a really sort of dry, hot summer will appreciate that because um, it's 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 just a much better road surface and and, and basically eliminates the dust problem. And we'll we'll also be chip sealing uh, Foundation Road, which is the long if if. Uh, you'll often travel on this when you're exiting the site. It's the long, sort of dusty road that goes behind the home-built area and out back around the North Forty. Uh, that's going to be chip sealed, and again, to have a bet um, that gets that, that's often got quite rutted up and potholed, and has been kicked up a lot of dust for the home-built campers. So uh, that's going to be a big improvement. I think there were some changes we made last year that maybe didn't get noticed that we weren't able to use because of the uh, weather problems we had a lot of we, we had a lot of electrical hookups um, in the camping area that we were unable to use because of the weather and of course uh, we're hoping to be able to use those this year and uh, we had a brand new shower block in the North 40 which uh, only got a small amount of utilization uh, until later in the week um, so I think I think um, you know, not not huge changes compared to some of the major layout changes that have been made in in recent years. Okay, and let's see when uh, oh the uh, Mig twenty nine from Quincy, Illinois. Any chance that that might be uh, venturing uh, north across the border? That's a good question. Um, I actually I, I wasn't touch, and I, I I think I sort of said, you know, would you like to come to Oshkosh and it, and of course, it's it's all about fuel because even in a short flight from Illinois to Wisconsin, uh, a MiG-29 can burn a heck of a lot of fuel. <laughs> um, so I'd love for it to happen. I, 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 um, so what can I say that other than maybe on that one? Wouldn't surprise me if it came, but it wouldn't surprise um, it wouldn't surprise me if it didn't come. All right. Uh, Ed thinks the uh, the photo of your cub is is magnificent. He's wondering if it will be parked in the uh, vintage area. Um, where will it be parked? I, I I always do park it out. I, although I've got a hanger here, I think it's part of my um, you know it's it's good form to to put it on display. And I've had it in the we've had like an affordable flying area because this is an it's an LSA uh, compliant aircraft. Um, but I've also had it in the vintage area, so. Um, I actually don't exactly know where it's going to be this year, but maybe the vintage area. I think we've come up with a uh, with a new contest, and that is uh, find Adam's airplane. <laughs> and uh, by the way, that one other uh, comment that goes with your airplane was uh, someone was wondering if you're going to get some uh, mutt muffs for uh, for Jenny, your co-pilot. I have mutt muffs for Jenny, but she won't wear them. Um, it's, it, it, it's amazing to me that you know any area of uh, of commerce co competition will emerge. So I was in the I was in the exhibit booths at Oshkosh last year, and there's a new competitor to muff muff muffs, and I, I can't remember what they're called, but um, they sold me those and explained why my dog wouldn't wear muff muff muffs, but would definitely wear those. But she wouldn't wear the second set either, so. <laughs> 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 you know, she's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> they have a mind of their own. Uh, do you know if any of uh, Bert's starships still exist? And if so, uh, is there a chance of getting one here? Yes. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Um, if uh, if you'd studied that slide carefully, there was a starship on it, and uh, I put that in there. I forgot to mention that uh, one will be coming to Oshkosh. It's owned by someone called Robert uh, Shearer, and. Uh, 
Uh, Bert's actually often come to Oshkosh in that airplane himself in recent years, and uh, that will be on Conoco Phillips Plaza. Well, as long as we're on the uh, Bert theme, what about uh, uh, Spaceship Two and White Knight Two? Um, well, I, I anticipate that question. I, I I don't think that will happen this year. We've have of course uh, approached and talked to Virgin Galactic, and they've been they've been wonderful to work with over the years. Um, uh, I think. Uh, you know, of course, the, the, the primary mission is to, to get their spaceship in space, and I think Oshkosh falls at an inconvenient time for them this year. Um, they're getting to a point where uh, they really need to be going through the flight test program in their aircraft, not, not taking a month off to equip and come and put a big display on Oshkosh. So um, I am not expecting to see uh, White Knight 2 and Spaceship 2 here this year, but uh, certainly in, in some forthcoming year. Bert has promised us that one day he will arrive at Oshkosh via space, and we're going to hold him to that. Um, the uh, rumors of the grass runway uh, for the uh, for the particular for the very very vintage aircraft uh, out on the uh, south end of the field is it going to be in operation this year? Rumors of a grass runway. Well. Um, Grass, we used to have a grass runway at Oshkosh, and then through um, when as the airport was expanded, the the airport authority put a taxiway right through the grass runway. So for quite a long time, uh, we've 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 not really had uh, a, a decent place that uh, tail skid airplanes can land on. And that I think that's the type of aircraft that is we really regret not being able to get into Oshkosh because they, a tail skid airplane really needs a grass runway to land on. So uh, we actually did do some work last year uh, to smooth out an area down towards the south end of, of the grounds and, and did have uh, a tail skid um, um, runway last year. And I think there are um, some hopes that we can improve that this year. Uh, there's a little, there's a couple of places where it's bumpy, and I think the plan is in place to sort of smooth that out. Um, I do want to be careful about it, though, not to set the expectation that, you know, anybody that wants to land on grass can just come in and land on grass. Um, it, it, because of the location of it, it will need to be uh, something that's pre-arranged uh, with the aircraft owner. All right, and we'll go from the very vintage tail skid airplanes to uh, I guess uh, somewhat cutting edge. Any word on the uh, the space shuttles that uh, that are now being retired? Uh, space shuttles, yeah, that's that's something we've uh, been working on quite a lot. Although I wouldn't expect to see a space shuttle at Oshkosh uh, 2011. Um, um, the announcement was made actually just just this week. Uh, I think it was Monday of the final destination of. Um, all the space shuttles, and that means that over the next um, 18 months or so, there will be several movements of, air, of space shuttles around the country. And wh what we are hoping to do is to coincide one of those movements with a, a visit of the space shuttle to Air Venture. Um, it would, it, I, I think, it would not happen this year, but but there is quite a good chance that it would happen next year. We've we've done quite a lot of the background work into uh, the load bearing uh, capacity of our runways, and um, there is a you know, good, good sort of spirit about this this idea. Um, so you know, keep your fingers crossed. Um, and uh, I should have clarified this would be on the back of a, a Boeing 747, um, and and that's something that we're you know we'll we'll keep pursuing. Um, any chance for a Thunderbird or Blue Angel uh, flyby or or appearance this year? Um, maybe a Blue Angel flyby. Um, they, 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 they will be transiting from, um, you know, sort of roughly through our airspace uh, during the week of air venture. Um, any of you that have heard my presentations before may have heard, may have heard me talk about the jet demonstration teams. We do, we do get asked quite a lot, you know, why do the Blue Angels and Thunderbirds and Snowbirds, etc., not appear at Oshkosh? Um, we're actually unable. Uh, we, we don't have a. Uh, an aerobatic box that is big enough uh, to contain the big jet demonstration teams, and um, you know, we, in many ways, we'd, we'd love to have them, and they'd love to come, but we're not. Uh, unless we evacuated half of the city of Oshkosh, um, which 
I guess the residents would probably have some something to say about it, and the businesses and things like that. Um, that that one is really really is a tough challenge for us. So I think the best we're likely to get in current circumstances is something like a flyby, um, uh, you know, in transit from one place to another. And um, uh, the best chance we've got this year will be the Blue Angels. I think we do have at least one of the Blue Angels airplanes will be stopping in uh, to participate um, during the week. And th th there's going to be a lot of, of current inventory Navy airplanes there this year. Um, I, I know I, I talked about the historic um, um, historic paint scheme airplanes, but there's, the, we do, we've been contacted by tons of Navy units. So uh, we've actually, we, to the extent, we even allocated some overflow parking for for, mi for military aircraft this year, which we've never done before. All right. Uh, along that same line. Um do you have a, a sense of some of the uh, airshow performers who will be or ha who have committed to uh, to being at Oshkosh? Yes, I do. Um, they're actually all published on our website right now. I can uh, uh, I, I got the list printed out. I'll pick out some of the highlights. Um, um, you know, some of the some of the favorites from the past, like uh, the Aeroshell team and Sean Tucker, Julie Clark, Mike Goulian. Uh, we'll all be back. Um, we'll make things that are a little bit different. Um, we're trying to work a little bit more of the um, solo warbird kind of displays in. So Doug Rosendahl is going to do a routine in his uh, P-51. Greg Shelton's going to do a wildcat routine. Scott Yokes is going to do a P-51 routine. Um, we've, got a, we've got something that I don't think has been at Oshkosh before called Team Chaos, uh, which <coughs> uh, is... A, I guess you need to go and look them up on the web, but and there's lots of photographs of fire and smoke and explosions and uh, jet trucks and uh, all that kind of stuff that you would expect with something called Team Chaos. Um, so I'm sure that will be that will be noisy and fun and uh, exciting for for uh, children of all ages. Um, uh, Dave Martin is doing a routine in his Young Meister. He, he, I've seen him do that before. I really, I really like that. Bob Carlton's back with his jet sail plane. Matt Yonkin's going to be there in the Twin Beach. Uh, he's been really popular. Uh, Chuck Aaron's going to be here with the Red Bull helicopter. Uh, so that maybe gives you a, gives you a flavour of things, plus some of the other aspects that I've mentioned uh, uh, through the presentation. Uh, camping pre-registration. Um... I understand that the uh, pre-registration uh, or the early camper registration is moving from sort of the center of, of Camp Scholler to somewhere else. Has that been determined? Um, that's a piece of knowledge I do not have, Steve. I, I called convention headquarters this afternoon and said, have you got anything that you want to brief me on in case questions come up that we changes to people's experience? And uh, um, that one didn't come up. So, uh, in fact, the feeling was there wouldn't be much change at all this year, so uh, maybe we'll have to try and follow up on that one offline. Okay. Uh, and do you know when the uh, campground officially opens? Uh, no. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Whoops. It's like, <laughs> can I refer you to the website? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like, it's, it's a, it, I had a lot of fun last year, by the way. For the f I, I happened to live in the campground through the whole experience. Uh, I, my wife and I and, and Jenny lived in uh, a fifth wheel from May through October, and it was it was a lot of fun. You know, people have always told me how wonderful the community is and uh, in the campgrounds, and it was I, I really really enjoyed being part of the whole experience. So it starts to, I mean. It actually, I've noticed it starting to change even this week because after Sun and Fun, uh, we get an influx of, of our long-term volunteers uh, come up here. And so I noticed the volunteer campground was already starting to fill up. Um, but I think officially, is it is it the last week in June, something like that, that the campground opens? But you definitely need to look that one up on the website to get the exact answer. I believe it's June 24th, but I'll try to confirm that in uh, in just a moment. Uh, is Vintage Wings bringing their uh, saber back this year? Um, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think Vintage Wings are just going to bring the their Yellow Wings fleet, um, their Lysander, and their Swordfish, which is a pretty good effort, I think. Uh, agreed. Uh, Andy's wondering if there are camping areas to park cars next to uh, planes and tents. Um, 
Camp Scholler would have, you'd be able to park vehicles next to uh, your campsite as part of the campsite. But uh, Adam, I don't believe there's any area uh, actually to, to put a vehicle next to an airplane. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay, so in Camp Scholler, yes, the vehicles you can park right next to your tent, uh, and lots of folks do, but in the aircraft areas, that would not uh, that would not be possible. And I think we have just about cleared the question board here. Um, and as long as uh, I have a moment, I'm going to put in a plug for EIA Radio. Uh, and uh, if, if you miss the sounds of, of Air Venture and, and you'd like to relive uh, last year and, and some of the previous years, uh, EIA Radio streams live on the web uh, 365 days a year. And we would love to have you uh, tune in and, and listen to uh, some of the things you may have missed last year and get you kind of ready for, for this year's uh, show. You can uh, pick it up at uh, eiaradio.org. Uh, and uh, they also have a Facebook page and a Twitter feed as well. So with that, Adam, uh, we've cleared off the uh, uh, question board. Any last uh, closing comments from you? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I've enjoyed it this evening. Thank you, everyone, for the questions. And uh, uh, we'll be doing another one of these probably about a month before the event, something like that. Uh, and that will be a more... Um, There'll be more detail in that of, of, of whatever I wasn't able to cover this evening. Um, so, as, as the slide says, see you in Oshkosh. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. And thank uh, all of you for uh, for joining us this evening for our, our webinar. Uh, as uh, I mentioned at the beginning, when the webinar concludes, there'll be a short survey that'll pop up. And if you just take a moment and uh, fill in the questions, we appreciate your uh, participation. And appreciate you spending time with us this evening. So uh, tomorrow's Friday, so have a great weekend, and if you can, get out and go flying. Good night.